Section 2.5, we are going to talk about the force of friction. This is going to be a multi-part section because there's a lot to know about friction and a lot of useful real-world applications of it. So we're going to start our discussion about, fric with fric about friction by using a demonstration. So what we have in front of you is this pink basket, and there's stuff in it, so there's a mass in, the mass in it, um, so it's weighted down. This device that I'm holding in my hand here is a force probe, a digital force probe, and this hook is attached to the basket, and it can measure both tensional forces, the kind where you're stretching it, as well as compressional forces as if I were going to push the basket. Now in this case, what I am going to do in this demonstration, or what I do, and the data we're going to look at, is I'm going to slowly pull on this harder and harder and harder until it starts to slide, and then once it starts to slide, I'm going to try my best to pull it at a constant speed. So once again, I'm going to slowly increase how hard I'm pulling on this force probe, and eventually the force becomes strong enough that the cart, the basket, starts to slide. And when it starts to slide, I will pull it at constant speed. So I'm going to show you the, the data that's collected. Now this data is collected for example, during the first two seconds, about two seconds, it collected a 100 samples in a little bit less than uh, two seconds, 100 samples. So this is selecting and calculate, uh, measuring about 50, 50 samples a second. So in this first second here, you know, there, this is actually comprised of 50 data points, and it's been smoothed out in this curve. So we look at the graph overall, we can see... This portion here where I'm pulling it at, a, at roughly constant velocity, and this is the part where it's stationary. So I want to discuss what's happening to this. So in the beginning, it's, it's, it's stationary, and I started pulling on it, then stopped the device. That's why I didn't start at zero, zero. But when we are at this location right here, I am applying a force in this direction of one Newton, and the force of friction is minus one Newton. Now how I know that is of course I am at one Newton, but the object is stationary. That basket is stationary. And through Newton's second law, F net equals MA, if the acceleration is zero, if the acceleration is zero, then the net force must be zero. And since I'm applying a force, which I'm measuring of one Newton, the force of friction must be equal and opposite. So I know the force of friction because I know the force I'm applying. Similarly, I increase the force and now I have two Newtons I'm applying. And that means there's two, two Newtons of friction. And three applied and minus three force of friction and four and four. All the while it's stationary. And you can see this increases when I get up to five newtons and six newtons. I even exceed seven newtons. And then we can see at some point here, some point near the top, I ex get the force so large that the overall force drops down for that period that I am for that period, I'm pulling it at constant velocity, which is represented by this gray vertical line. So one of the questions we might try to ascertain is what is the maximum force? So if we were doing a best fit line of sorts, it might look like this. That might smooth out a little bit. That perhaps might be the very best. On the other hand, it might look a little bit more like this. So since we have data here and data here, and there are, since there's 50 measurements between here and here, there's 25 between here and here, there's still a lot of measurements here. So I think we want to, we want to rely on these and not exaggerate. And so this is probably maybe smooths over like that. That's the best we can do in that case. But notice though, we could say that that might be a little higher it might be a little lower. So there might be some uncertainty on it, but probably not as large as I've drawn it. So this is the case where we are stationary. Now, the program we have with these sensors tells us the time range 
from 0.02 to 2.02, 101 samples. The mean is about 4.295 newtons. And since, in this case, the force is increasing, it's not a constant thing that's varying, that 4.295 doesn't really have much of a meaning for us in this case because we know it gets higher than that. The standard deviation, similarly, would be not helpful there. We have a min, we have a maximum. And so the maximum corresponded to this point right here, 7.164. So maybe it's a little bit higher than that, maybe, maybe, um, maybe not. Um, but it's going to be pretty close to that. We're certainly not looking at 7.5, which we could see would be way up here, and 7.25, which is about where I've drawn that error bar. So we're you know, definitely between that 7.0 7 and 7.2 range. Maybe not. It may be as high as 2.5, but probably not. So we do have that maximum value at about 7.164 newtons, and that's for this first segment. And at that point, I'm going to draw a vertical gray line indicating that it's at this point right here where we have it's stationary. We have a constant velocity equal to zero and the acceleration equals zero from here to here. Then we see the force overall drops down and then it kind of settles in on these values here. And here are the statistics for that range. We see it runs from 2.02 .02 to about 4.94 seconds, 150 samples during that time. The mean is 5.773. So let's flesh out our scale here a little more. I'll put in some gray lines here to indicate things. So here is the 5.5. I wanted it gray. We'll put in the 5.5. And let's see, we can split those and we could put in a 5.75. And we could put in a 5.25, like so. So now what we have then is our mean which is 5.773. Standard deviation is about is 0.27 or a quarter. So it's going to, the mean, basically we're looking then, since this is about 5 point, uh, 5 point, this is 5.5. Let me take those label off. I put it in the wrong place. So the mean was, 5.773 newtons. And the standard deviation is plus or minus 0.26, which, when drawn, will take us a little bit lower than 5.5 and a little bit higher than 6.0. And of course, what that says, since it's standard deviation, remember, is that 68% of all the measurements are between those two lines. And when we look at what's outside those lines, either above, like here and here and here, and below, here and here and here, probably of the 147, we could probably convince ourselves that uh, you know two-thirds would be about 105, maybe 40 or 50 of those points might be outside. So it's, it's really representative. But the point is we do have our mean value It's about right there, plus or minus. So we have an average force, average force of 5.773 newtons. Now you might say, well, wait a minute, we didn't care about the average force over here. Why would we care about it here? And that's a very good question. What we would say is over here in this first part, we know it's clearly changing the force. But what we see here is the force here is changing, but it's really just varying around some number, some constant number. But that being said, we want to step back and take a look at the motion, because here we also have constant velocity, but it's not zero, and the acceleration is zero. So, through Newton's second law, 
F net equals MA, the acceleration is zero, the net force is zero. In other words, we have an applied force on average of 5.773 newtons, and here we have a friction force of minus 5.773 newtons. So the forces are balanced here. They're balanced over in the stationary part. The only place where it's imbalanced, where they are not balanced, is this zone right here. Unbalanced force. An unbalanced force. That means there is an F net. And what happens? Well, we go from a velocity of zero to some other velocity. There is acceleration. Yes, there is acceleration, so there is a net force in this particular case. There is a net force. And that net force would be equal to the force applied minus the force of friction. Which caused that acceleration for that short period of time in here. So in short, we have a period where the, the object remains stationary, acceleration is zero, the velocity is zero, the force increases, all the while the applied equals the force of friction until we reach a maximum. It breaks free, it accelerates, and as it's being pulled as a, at a constant velocity, the force varies a little bit because I could not pull it perfectly so, but there's about an average, a constant, uh, relatively average force around which it's varying. We again have constant velocity, but it's not zero. But since it's constant, the acceleration is zero, which means the forces are balanced. So what we know is, and what may stand out to us, is that we have an average force of 5.773 newtons, and over here we have a maximum force of about 7.2 newtons. So this part where it's stationary, and this part here where it's moving at constant velocity, we have an average force. When we continue this in the next video, we will start looking in greater depth about what this means.